the first day of Pesach and the and Tisha B'Av are both on the same day every year. It's a fascinating component of the Jewish calendar that has embedded in it the lesson of Nechama, the lesson of comfort. The lesson here is, is that to the extent that Pesach, the Passover, is about our redemption, we're reminded of that component of the Jewish experience, even on the saddest day in the Jewish calendar. It's interesting that Rabbi Schwab and Rosham Shemrafal Hirsch talked about the Hebrew word Nechama as meaning that not just comfort, but if you look throughout the Torah, the Hebrew word Nechama means a shift in perspective. First time in the Torah you see it is God is looking down on the world and seeing terrible, terrible failings of man and saying, Ki nichanti ki asisim, reconsidering, shifting perspective on whether hum humankind should ever have been established. I wanted to bounce off of the concept of the chatzotzros, of the trumpets. The trumpets, which were used during time of war, as well as other times, have a fascinating lesson that was shared by Rabbi Soloveitchik in a discussion of his concept of dealing with the tough times in, in, in life of Yiud versus Goral and quoting the passage where the chatzotzros are discussed, it says, So there's the word Eida and Machane. And he explains that Eida refers to us as a community. It refers to us as a community of destiny. It, it, refers to us basically in terms of dealing with times of war or times of difficulty by meaning making and finding our own inner voice in terms of our own inner response to the tragic times in life. Machane is more instinctual. Machane is more the, the global automatic response that Jews have in times of danger. Let me read to you an email I got from a close colleague only yesterday. This is a time that Israel is under attack. And this is a colleague who's involved in running a camp for children who were children of those who were lost in terror attacks in Israel. And they unfortunately were under missile attack earlier this week. And listen to her description of the Machane response, of the huddling together while under attack by these children who know all too well how vulnerable we are to Jews. I'll just read to you the small section of the very moving email I just received from her. She talked about how the children were of incredible help to each other in terms of huddling together and comforting each other while they were being shielded from the falling missiles. She talked about how children chose to sleep crowded together with their counselors, the children sharing beds and mattresses together, that kind of instinctual offering of comfort, the machana response. And I was thinking that so often in the Jewish experience, we respond as a community, especially in times of attack where we all pull together regardless of our differences. That's the machana response, that component of what the meaning of the chatzotzros, of the call of alarm, but also the call of comfort during times of stress. But the other component, which is the Eda response, how do we respond in a way that gives us comfort during this period of time of the three weeks, but during a time that as a people were under attack? I'll just share with you a classic Eda kind of response that I experienced not too long ago where I was meeting with a group of people who had experienced terrible loss as a result of a natural disaster, Hurricane Sandy, on the east coast of the United States. And there was a woman in an audience I was speaking to, and she gets up and she says, you know something? She says, um, during the hurricane, 
I lost everything. I lost my house. I lost all of my cars. And during the months since the hurricane, I've been walking around infused with a feeling of happiness like I've never experienced in my life. And the whole audience is looking at her. We couldn't figure out what she meant. And I asked her to explain what she meant. And she said, you know why? She said, because 70 years ago, my parents who were survivors, they also lost their home. They also lost everything they had. But alongside that, they lost their immediate family. My grandparents were all murdered by the Nazis. Everybody they knew, all cousins, aunts and uncles, were lost in the concentration camps. And I'm just thinking to myself how lucky I am that all I lost were physical possessions, but the people who matter to me are still here. And I'll just end with another Ada response, another response of Nechama that was written not too long ago describing the funerals of the three boys murdered in Israel not too long ago. Here's what Daniel Gordas writes, and with this I'll end. He's describing the funeral, and here's what he says. It was a moment when the tears we had struggled to suppress finally flowed. It was when one of the mothers, eulogizing her murdered son, evoked our grief, but also our hope. Israel's anguish, but also its determination, and expressed better than any of us could have the reason we will always be here. She turned to her son as he was being lowered into, into his kever, into his grave, and she said, Rest in peace, my child. We will learn to sing again without you. That's the essence of the Ada response, of meaning-making in the face of unspeakable anguish of ultimately rising together with the synergy between the Machana response, the unity that we have in the face of that which is uncontrollable in terms of giving each other consolation, integrated with the ego response, with the meaning-making and shift in perspective that's the essence of Nechama. May we all be Zoha as we go through the three weeks to learn the ultimate lesson, the lesson of comfort through connection and comfort through finding our own personal meaning as Jews in the face of ongoing stress, attack, and loss. Thank you.